permission now to continue to speak something and try not to go on too long. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, this uh, verse, obviously very famous um, and known as the, the verse that um, uh, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, one of the eight verses of the Shikshastakam. And this verse we quoted here. The next verse, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, um, he says, Raising my hands, I declare. Everyone, please hear me. String this verse on the thread of the holy name and wear it on your neck for continuous remembrance. So, uh, so many things could be spoken about this verse, but specifically, um, today I wanted to share one uh, pastime, or, yeah, pastime of uh, Jesus Christ that someone was sharing with me the other day, and, um, and I thought it was quite profound. Uh, I don't know how many people here grew up kind of from Christian background, okay, so a few. And, um, <clears throat> so, being somewhat maybe familiar, maybe ladies can move forward just a little bit. Oops, oops, thanks. Um, being somewhat familiar with the Bible, uh, unfortunately, I can't say that I had much enthusiasm about uh, going to church and reading the Bible in my youth. Um, but uh, fortunately, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, uh, now and again, whenever I come across some verses or the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ, I feel like I can actually understand them properly now and see them in sort of the Vedic light. So uh, with this, I just thought I would share this pastime, which some may be familiar with. I, when I heard it, I had forgotten about this, uh, this specific pastime, which has to do with um, the day before uh, Lord Jesus Christ was um, to be uh, crucified, which is known as Passover, so the day before that. And to explain that uh, he knew that his time had come. He actually knew all of these things would come to pass. And there are lots of other stories around that. But um, specifically, um, the evening before uh, Passover, uh, he... Uh, gathered all of his disciples together, and they had a feast. And then, uh, those of you may remember that this is the infamous place where the idea of the breaking of the bread, and Lord Jesus Christ stating that the bread is my body, and this wine or grape juice or whatever was served is my blood. But then it's, it's, it's described and explained that in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of this feast or towards the end, uh, Lord Jesus Christ uh, left the table and he went to the corner and he grabbed one pot of water and one uh, washing bowl and he called all of his disciples one by one forward and he began to wash their feet. And this is uh, quite a significant um, event uh, in so many ways uh, because, of course, Lord Jesus Christ uh, his status, at least to his disciples, was as guru. So here we have the guru, or the teacher, the spiritual master, who is now calling one by one his disciples forward and washing their feet. Which, uh, even in the, the tr tradition, of course, all of these, these things, we say the Christian tradition, this is actually in uh, uh, Jewish or Judaism, was the prominent culture then. <coughs> Or at least religious culture, but um, uh, we can we know that even if a saintly person arrives or if someone arrives, uh, generally you wash their feet. This is the way that you welcome them. So this is a, a, a kind of standard or known sort of uh, um, activity to us in Krishna consciousness. But in general, uh, it's considered. Uh, pretty low class to be the person who actually washes someone's feet. Um, and especially if you're the guru, generally it's not the custom that you wash your disciples' feet. Generally it's the other way around. 
In fact, if you know those of you who are initiated or aspiring for initiation, if your spiritual master came every day and said, "Please take off your shoes and allow me to wash your feet," <clears throat> you might try to run a mile, uh, at least one mile, <laughs> several. Um, yeah, like that. So um, here you have Jesus Christ, who is, uh, you know, let's say at least an exceptionally advanced. Uh, personality um, who is now calling his disciples forward one by one and requesting to wash their feet and in this pastime uh, different interactions uh, happen at many different um, sort of uh, at least three main points that I wanted to uh, bring out of this pastime um, are there and they relate specifically to the, the mood and mentality um, and characteristics that are epitomized by this verse, Trinata Pisanichi Na. So, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, when he was washing the feet of his disciples, of course they were feeling ashamed and embarrassed. Uh, one of them even protested. Um, I think this was uh, Simon Peter, uh, Peter Simon, I can't remember which way it goes, but, um, and uh, he said, you know, please. My Lord, you know, don't wash my feet. You know, never will you wash my feet. And, and Jesus responded to him, basically, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you're no longer my disciple. And so at that point, he had a choice to make. <laughs> so it's described that he put his feet forward, but he said, then don't just wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my head, wash my whole body. <laughs> basically giving himself fully in surrender. And... Um, and Jesus commented that there's no need, you're already clean of body, I just simply need to wash your feet. And he continued to wash his feet. Now another thing that we need to understand about the scene of this scenario and situation is that there was one amongst uh, Lord Jesus' followers or disciples who was basically going to betray him. Anyone remember who that was? Judas. It was Judas. So he was also present in that assembly. So this is another very important thing to uh, understand because in this scene also Jesus comments later that um, you know all of you are basically my followers except for one and he clearly states this out loud <clears throat> so that later when it was kind of realized that someone had betrayed him it was clear that he already knew. So. Here we have Lord Jesus who's washing everyone's feet, but not just his disciples' feet, but he's also washing the feet of the person who's about to betray him. So this is also another very interesting point that we should understand. So, <clears throat> and like this, after um, Lord Jesus finished washing uh, the feet of his disciples, he made a statement that was um, in simple, uh, Basically, as I have done by washing all of your feet, so after I am gone, you all should wash one another's feet. So these are the three main points. The first one that Jesus, who is the guru or the spiritual master, uh, the teacher, he is exhibiting extreme humility uh, in his um, actions by washing the feet of his disciples. And uh, in this way, he's uh, showing um, by example that one who is, takes a high position or takes his post, that he should understand that ultimately he is das anu das anu das, that he is simply the servant, he is not the master. <clears throat> so even one takes the position of master, he should see that position of master as service. He should consider himself uh, a servant. I remember, I've probably shared this before, that um, uh, when I first was, uh, so when this Ranat Marj was asked uh, if I could, if he would accept me as his aspiring disciple, and I was questioning him what his answer was, uh, he smiled and said, I'm happy to become your servant. And I was completely bewildered. And I said, but Maharaj, I don't want you to be my servant, I want you to be my guru. And he just laughed and he said, yes, 
I'm happy to become your servant. So this is the mood of someone who is like taking that post. As Prabhupada says here, this example indicates that a spiritual master or leader should not be proud of his position, being always humbler than an ordinary common man. 